Hey everybody, uh, so we're picking up where we left off in the last video. Uh, as you saw, we removed the lower intake manifold and kind of everything else that we don't need anymore. Um, after I finished that video, I actually went ahead and removed a bunch of the cooling components such as the thermostat housing and kind of some coolant lines here just to clean them up, reseal them and everything may as well while I'm in here. Um, and I also noticed I never really got around to taking the stock harness out fully just because it got a little too dark out. So today we're also going to be taking out the ECU and just dealing with the rest of this uh, to make way for the new one. And then we'll be able to get the lower intake manifold back on the new one, torque everything down, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Maybe we'll be able to test fit the new harness once everything is cleaned up. Uh, so let's get started. Alright, so I got the ECU part of the harness uh, removed from the firewall. Uh, it was a little harder than I thought. Um, as you can see back there, there's those two black standoffs for the climate control unit that's right above here. Um, the harness actually goes behind them, kind of like that. Um, so I just undid the two Phillips that you could see here, and I was able to squeeze the harness out just underneath like that. And then over here, you can see where the harness uh, goes through the firewall and into the engine bay. There's just a big rubber grommet that goes around it. And if you get a screwdriver, a big flathead maybe, you should be able to pry the ends and I should be able to push it out. Let's see. And there we go. So now it's loose and we should be able to pull all of this part of the harness through and out. Um, there's probably a few more zip ties out there that I have to do, but for now we're done in here. Alright, so we've got the stock harness out. It was a little bit more uh, intensive than I would have thought. Um, over here underneath the battery tray, there's a few connectors that you can't really see. Um, two of them were just right here, easy to get, but one of them kind of snuck up here and it didn't really have a connector, so I had to cut it. Um, not sure really what it's for, I'll have to look into it, but I don't think it will affect me with the, uh, the new harness I'm putting in. Um, also off camera, I also removed the feed and return fuel lines, the rubber ones. Uh, they're just over here on the floor. Uh, you can see the stock fuel filter there. But uh, yeah, with the harness out of the way, we have a lot more room now. Everything's open up over here. And uh, I'm just gonna clean up a bit and then we'll get ready to put the lower intake manifold back on. So the lower intake manifold is now fully on, torqued down, we've got all the coolant lines hooked up on the front and the back, and we're pretty much ready to uh, carry on with the uh, install. So before we get the uh, wiring harness laid out, I actually wanted to get the injectors and rails mounted on the intake first. Um, I think it's just easier that way instead of having to snake the harness around them uh, when we install the rails. So we're going to go inside right now and get the injectors mounted into the rails and then we'll come back out and get them mounted onto the intake. Alright, so before we can get the uh, rails mounted into the car, we have to install the injectors into the rails first. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that. 
So here we have our injectors. If we take a close look at one of them, so at the very top, we have our ceiling rings. So we have the upper and lower. And then at the bottom, this is our gasket or the uh, rubber, it's not really an O-ring, uh, rubber grommet to seal into the lower intake manifold. So in order to prevent the seals from ripping when we install them, the kit comes with this um, silicone grease, or sorry, not silicone, it's like a synthetic PTFE grease. We're going to put that onto the O-rings, and then we're going to gently press them into the openings on the bottom of the rails. Alright, so the injectors and rails are mounted and they are in there pretty sturdy. They are not going anywhere. Um, another thing to note, if you are planning on running these rails or any aftermarket rail for that matter, um, you actually have to grind down uh, parts of the lower intake manifold. You can see right here, here, here and here, and then maybe even a little bit on these end runners. Um, I already did it on mine as you can see, but normally there's these little standoffs that stick out too far. So you have to grind them flush in order to fit the rails properly. Um, also, there is a little bit of a clearance issue here. Um, all the other ones can run straight fittings um, coming off, no problem. But this one is too close to this water neck. And what normally people do is they have a really sharp 90 degree bend that just barely clears it. But since I have these welded on um, line bungs here, uh, it actually cuts down on a little bit of space and instead of running a 90 degree bend, what I'm hoping I can do is run a 180 degree bend and we are gonna try to get this um, system and lines to run back over the rails and come out towards the back over here. And we're gonna kind of route them around to the fuel pressure regulator, which we'll mount over here somewhere. But um, as you can see, there is a lot of clearance for this 180 degree bend now has lots of space between the water neck and we're gonna be running the lines right over on both sides um, so yeah now that the rails and injectors are mounted we can go ahead and test fit our harness So the harness lined up with everything a lot better than I thought. Right now it's just sitting on top of everything. This is not the final you know, position for this harness. Probably going to end up taking it out again to do the fuel system. But uh, I do have the connectors through the firewall. They fit through the stock uh, opening no problem. Um, they come up here. Uh, this little branch off for the, um, the relay box has lots of slack in it so you can mount it anywhere over here in this area near the battery. Um, then it comes up, we have this uh, junction here where everything breaks off. Um, the nice thing that I like about this kit is uh, when Felix made it, he has all these connectors so that you can disconnect the injector harnesses separate from the harness. Same with the coil packs. Um, so right now I have all the injector plugs plugged in and they tuck nice and <clears throat> neatly underneath the valve cover here. And then here you just have the connector for them and here's the harness side of it right here same goes for the other side have everything plugged in and we have the injector harness uh, over here which will plug in no problem uh, there's a couple grounds which uh, have lots of slack so you can kind of put them wherever you need to and if we come over to the other side we have our uh, coil pack 
uh, harness here. So like I said, mine are gonna mount right here above the um, brake booster. So we have lots of slack for that. Um, we have, let's see, this is going to be our TPS sensor. So that's gonna fit right over here somewhere. We have our um, map sensor, which will go over here near the uh, plenum. Uh, we have our harness here somewhere for the um, cast trigger wheel that reaches over here with no issues. And then coming over here, which I was worried about, but didn't turn out to be a problem. Um, we have our intake temperature sensor, which will reach down here uh, once everything's kind of tucked away. Um, and there's a few other small things that I'm probably missing, but for the most part, everything fits very well. And once it's kind of tucked neatly behind everything, it will be a really good looking piece. So I think that's where I'm going to cut this video off guys. Um, I do want to save all of the fuel system stuff for its own video. We'll be going over the, um, the lines, the fuel pressure regulator, all the cutting and measuring for that. That will be in its own video. Um, so until then guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you then.